Welcome to today's video, where we will be talking about multivariable optimization. Now, this is a class of problems that appears time and time again on the GRE subject test, and is often the least correctly answered problem on the test. Part of the reason is, it's often difficult to recall the conditions for the classification of the critical points of a multivariable function. And so today's goal is to give you a way to remember that criterion that's a natural extension of single variable calculus and is maybe different than the way you saw to classify the critical points when you took multivariable calculus. Okay, so today's function that we will work with is the following. So let f of x y be x cubed plus 3xy plus y cubed, classify the critical points of f. Okay, so we'll need to find the critical points and then actually classify what type of critical points they are. Now notice this function is symmetric, meaning if I interchange x and y, I still get the same function. Now that kind of behavior um, will actually help us out in the classification of the critical points. And it turns out that in a lot of the GRE math subject test um, multivariable exam problems, the function given is actually symmetric uh, about x and y. So this technique that we'll see um, is something that can be used in the test. Okay, so like I said, I'd like to go about this using an analogy from single variable calculus. So in single variable calculus, to find the critical points, you compute the derivative of f and set it to zero. Analogously, in the multivariable case, you compute the gradient and set it to zero. And remember, the gradient is the vector consisting of the partial derivatives of x with respect to f with respect to the given variables. Okay, so here the partial derivative is 3x squared plus 3y, the partial with respect to x, and the partial with respect to y is 3y squared plus 3x. If we set this, this to zero, we get a system of two equations. Right? And if we simplify, substitute equation, um, one of the equations into the other, we get y is, y to the fourth is negative y. And so y has to be zero or negative one and if we substitute that in to equation two, the y values, we figure out that the critical points are zero, zero, and negative one, negative one. Okay. Okay, so I went through that rather quickly. You can take a look and um, try that on your own. But the key point here is that to find the critical points, like in single variable calculus, you need to set a derivative to zero. In a multivariable case, it's the gradient that gets set to zero. Okay, so now we know our critical points, the points 0, 0, and negative 1, negative 1. And now it comes time to classify these in terms of whether or not they are local mins, local maxes, saddle points, or if the second derivative test is inconclusive for them. So the way I'd like to introduce the second derivative test is a little bit different than what's typically done in multivariable calculus. I want to do it in a way that naturally extends single variable calculus and uses the mathematics you know. All right. so at this point when you're studying for the GRE math subject test, you have in linear algebra at your arsenal. But typically multivariable calculus is taught in undergraduate curricula before linear algebra is taught, or at least the eigenvalue part. So I'd like to introduce you to a classification of the critical points that exploits eigenvalues. So to classify critical points, you need to compute the Hessian of your given function. And that's the matrix of second partials. I've written down, that down here. And typically in multivariable co courses, you see this in terms of these Fs with subscripts. So Fxx is used to denote the second partial of f, particularly that with respect to x and x again. Okay, so if you have a specific critical point and you compute the Hessian of your given function, 
and evaluate the Hessian at that particular critical point, you can classify the critical point based on the eigenvalues of this matrix. And here's how this naturally extends single variable calculus in a way that um, will make it easier to recall what the multivariable critical point classification conditions are. Okay, so recall that in single variable calculus, a point is a maximum if the second derivative is negative. Here, we'll have a local max if all the eigenvalues are negative of the Hessian at the given point. Similarly, we have a local max when all the eigenvalues are positive. The analogy in single variable calculus is the second derivative is positive. We'll give us a local min. We'll have a saddle point if we have a mix of positive and negative eigenvalues. And as soon as you have zero as an eigenvalue, the second derivative test is inconclusive in determining what kind of critical point you have. So let's use that in the given example that we had. So our function again was the function given here. And so it's Hessian is the second, the matrix of second partials, which in this case is 6x, 3, 3, and 6y. So at the given points, our matrix of partials is at 0, 0, it's 0, 3, 3, 0, and at negative 1, negative 1, it's negative 6, 3, 3, negative 6. And now written down the eigenvalues of these matrices here, negative 3, negative 9, and 3, negative 3, respectively. So the second derivative test tells us that we have a local max at negative 1, negative 1, and a saddle point at 0, 0. Okay, how did I compute these eigenvalues quickly? Well, if you look at a previous video that I made, you'll notice that the sum of the rows in the matrix of section partials at negative 1, negative 1 is negative 3. And the sum of the rows for the uh, critical point at 0, 0, it's Hessian, is the sum of the rows are 3 and 3. And so 3 is an eigenvalue of this matrix, and negative 3 is an eigenvalue of this matrix. And the sum of the eigenvalues of a matrix is the sum of its diagonal entries, its trace. So as soon as we have negative 3 and 3 as eigenvalues, we can determine the other eigenvalues by knowing what the trace is. All right, so there is a great quick way to go about classifying the critical points of multivariable functions, and it uses a method, particularly eigenvalues, that is much easier to recall than the methods typically used in multivariable calculus. And to mention, a proof of this is a great thing to read because it uses a lot of geometry that's intuitive and extends what you see in pictures for the single variable case. Thank you for watching today's video. If you liked the video, please click the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to this channel.